So uh, thanks again for having us here. We're just we're thrilled to be here. Um, as you know, a little bit of description about what I do. The one thing that's not in there is probably the funnest thing I get to do is meet and talk with people like you guys in these types of venues because uh, at Mitel, uh, we found that in order for us to be successful uh, out working with our customers, it's really a joint discovery with a shared definition of success. And that means understanding how people need to communicate and want to communicate, and we try to provide the best technologies for them to do that. Um, but before I get started in all the technical uh, mumbo jumbo and a little bit about Mitel, I thought I'd tell you a little interesting story that happened to Stephanie on the way up here this morning. So we're driving up here, and uh, don't, it's okay. So uh, we're driving up here, and uh, there's a sign on the side of the road that says talking dog for sale. So I'm a pretty curious guy, so I've got to find out what this is all about. So um, we pull in there, knock on the door, gentleman answers the door, I says, yeah, I see you have a talking dog for sale. The guy says, yeah, I sure do. So he takes me around to the back, introduces me to the dog. I says, so you can talk? The dog says, yeah, yeah, I sure can. So Stephanie and I kind of step back a little bit, freaks us out. So we're like, well, what's your story? So the dog says, you know, I found out at an early age that I knew how to speak and being man's best friend and all, I wanted to serve mankind. So I went and talked to the government. Before I knew it, I was being whisked around, you know, recruited into the CIA, spying on foreign dignitaries, because after all, who in the world is going to think a dog is a spy? Stephanie and I, as you could see, are probably shaking our heads going, this is amazing. And so he says, well, the travel got to be a little much. I got married, settled down, had a few pups, got a jo you know, job with a local TSA. It's a much more relaxed life for me now, so I'm really enjoying it. I'm like, this is unbelievable. I said, well, how much for the dog? The guy says, $10. I'm like, $10, really? He's like, yeah, the dog's a liar. He never did any of that stuff. <laughs> All right, I'll keep my day job. <laughs> All righty, so let's talk about unified communications and collaboration and, and how that affects all of us today in medium and small business and large business. The drivers that are out there affecting uh, all of us and um, put some context into it for you guys. So first off, I'd just like to start with the big market drivers that are out there today that are kind of dictating the way technologies roll out. And the first thing is, is globalization. I mean. You know, companies are getting, um, and I say relatively smaller and smaller because of the connectivity around the world allows us to communicate a little bit better. Networks are getting more robust and uh, more pervasive, so it allows us to do business a little bit more streamlined around the world. But it also presents a little bit of uh, more challenges for us because as we expand dynamically around the world, it presents different business challenges, cultural challenges, and others. So you want to make sure that you offer the right sets of technologies to help address these needs for your customers. And that means... Um, you have to get out there and talk to those users of the technology and make sure you understand what are the specific things they need to do and how they want to communicate. Because my kids are uh, 20 and 18, and they would just assume SMS text me than talk to me. So, uh, and these are the folks that are going to be coming into the workspace. So we've got to figure out how do we provide the sets of tools that are going to be relevant for these folks to be productive. Speaking of that, the other big driver for that, um, <laughs> down in the bottom, uh, left of the slide as you look at it is mobility. Mobility is really turning IT upside down for the most part today. Um, I read um, a couple of weeks ago where uh, spend in uh, application development uh, in IT departments, somewhere north of about 50 to 55% of that application development spend is going towards uh, mobile platform uh, computing applications. So uh, as we look to enable things like on tablets, netbooks, notebooks, smartphones, and all this other kind of stuff, you're going to see a big shift around mobility, allowing us to work you know, at home, on the road, in the office transparently across any device or medium uh, that we want to work with. And then uh, lastly, uh, the bottom right of this is social networking. And the impact that that's having today, not only on um, the consumer side of the business, I, I don't think yet that businesses fully understand the impact of social media. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the context of a contact center and how we interact with our customers and how we provide better customer service and uh, how we can actually do some things differently to market to our customers differently and to provide better service levels. In the center, what is really enabling uh, this, this explosion in different uh, type of uh, ways to communicate and deliver technologies is, is the cloud. And I mean, the cloud term is really nothing new. I mean, cloud technologies have been around for quite some time. I mean, the mainframe could be described as a cloud technology or the PSTN. But today, it's, um, it's being leveraged more by a framework 
and that's the virtualization framework because it's allowing customers to take advantage of their private data centers and extend that out uh, into public data centers or shared data centers to take advantage of applications and services that might be utility to them and they don't really necessarily want to manage it, they just want to rent that service and they can do it. But then there are services that are core to them, you know, core competencies in their businesses and they want to run that in their data center. Well, with being able to use VMware to deploy your applications across, that provides you a consistent framework to deliver those uh, business applications either privately, publicly, or what we believe to be probably the predominant um, architecture, at least for the foreseeable future, is a hybrid technology. It's kind of a mix between public and private. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. When I talk um, to CIOs around the country and, uh, you know, IT folks, you know, there's a consistent theme that, that exposes itself is that their waterfront just continues to expand, which is just another way of saying there is a myriad of devices, you know, coming onto the network today that they need to figure out how to manage, you know, how to integrate applications on and secure. Um, you know, so it's quite challenging and that's really being driven uh, by what you'll hear in most trade rags is the consumerization of IT. Where it used to be, you know, we'd show up, you know, we'd show up to work, we would get our 400 pound laptop, probably some sort of a flip phone or a Blackberry and, you know, we'd have access to our applications where, you know, today, you know, the CEO shows up with his latest birthday present, it's an iPad and he goes to the IT guy, throws it on his desk and he says, hey, make this work for me. So that's driving a big change in IT, right? So uh, again, how do we manage all that stuff and keep it consistent and deliver uh, business applications? Um, so IT is really struggling on this, meaning they're finding new ways um, before where you know, the C, uh, CIO or IT department was more a cost center in businesses. They're really moved now to the pointy end of the stick for companies where it's how do you help me get more competitive? How do you provide me the right business intelligence to you know, re you know, retain and attract new customers you know, with technology versus you know, how do I keep the lights on? Right? So it's a big difference out there today. So where does Mitel fit in all this? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, Mitel is a pure play um, unified communications company, which that's all we do. We focus on delivering communications applications from your business telephone service to your contact centers to mobility integration, business intelligence call recording, you know, anything that's associated with how you communicate with your customers, we have a suite of applications that are going to help you do that. You know, we don't pretend to be a networking company, we don't pretend to be a computer company, we are a pure play software applications company for UCC. And that allows us to provide a focus on what we deliver to our, to our customers. And, um, our CEO, Rich, put it, put it in very simple terms. He's like, you know, we're going to be the premier business communication systems provider in the world, and we're going to do that not by being the largest, you know, but by being the best, and that's delivering superior financial results to our shareholders. And I want to spend a few seconds talking about creating loyal customers and partners. Anybody can have happy customers, but it's a big difference to have loyal customers where you're providing a service to your partner community or your customers such that they wouldn't even consider going somewhere else for their communication services. And that means you have to be plugged into their business needs, their community needs, end to end to understand how you're doing business with these folks. And, and that's very different than what you see from a lot of companies out there today. And then lastly, you know, we want to make Mitel a place where people want to work because when you have energized, happy people engaged in what they're doing, that's going to translate into creating you know, great opportunities for people, great customer interaction, and creating innovation. You know, so it's, it's a very exciting place to be um, today. So just a little bit about Mitel. We're roughly about a $650 million uh, company and growing. Uh, most of that revenue, about two thirds of it, is uh, in the United States, and then there's another big chunk in uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. We have emerging markets in both Asia Pacific and Canadian and Latin America, where we're starting to expand out. But, um, after the recession, I mean, uh, the market took a little bit of a turn for probably most all of us in here, but uh, consistently since, um, since 08, we've started to turn the corner and grow ourselves consistently to become the third largest you know, IP telecommunications provider around the world. And we're not slowing down. So let's talk about how important 
unified communications is to the cloud. Now before I move on, I've been saying unified communications here for probably five minutes now. Does everybody know what I'm talking about when I say unified communications? Uh-oh, nobody? Show of hands? Oh, good, you scared me to death. So unified communications is um, you know, integrating your business telephones, your mobile devices, your email, your faxes, all of the ways that you communicate into a single user interface to help streamline the way you communicate. So for this discussion, we'll use that simple definition for what I mean by unified communications. As you can see here, 80% of uh, server workloads in the data center um, are gonna be virtualized by the year 2015, and that's, that's reported to us by Gartner, who's one of our industry's probably most well-known analysts and uh, there's no reason to doubt that. I mean, most businesses today are probably well past 50 to 60% in their data centers virtualized, and there's no reason for that to slow down. Um, about 50% of SMBs that are virtualizing, they're gonna take, within two years, most of their UC is gonna be virtualized. So Mitel got out ahead of this uh, about three years ago, uh, investigating a relationship with VMware, which we've got a tightly coupled um, strategic relationship with VMware, where we have aligned you know, R&D roadmaps, you know, we have uh, engineers that are tied together on both ends. I mean, it's more than just one of these, you know, VMware ready checks. Is everybody familiar with VMware and virtualization? Okay. So what that gave us the ability to do is get a big leap on the market and provide the world's first virtualized unified communications and call control system running in a virtualized environment. So that means that you can deploy our suite of applications within your data center the same way that you deploy every other application in your business. And we'll spend a little bit of time talking about how that fits. And then there's the other piece of this which is hosted. There's lots of um, services out there today. I mean, it started with Centrix, you know, hosting, um, you know, uh, phone service. There's some providers that provide, um, and Mitel included, you know, a hosted service for uh, small businesses that have, you know, five to 10 handsets and they just want to rent that, you know, from the cloud, you can do that. But as we move over the next couple of years, that's probably only going to make up about 15% of the market. But as we move beyond that, that's probably going to become a pretty big chunk of um, the way we deploy unified communications. And it's leveraging the fundamentals of the cloud, uh, hosting things like infrastructure as a service providers, which will allow us to rent all that compute network and uh, storage from the cloud and then just deploy those UC applications you know, to those businesses and then they can use it as a fixed operational cost. You know, they, they understand that, you know, I have 150 users, I'm gonna pay X amount per user per month, and it's an operating, ex operating expense versus spitting out a bunch of capital every three to five years on repurchasing a phone system. So it's over the next, you know, three to five years, we're gonna see that shift move. So Mitel is well prepared for that. And we've done that by providing a portfolio of applications for our customers that allow them to leverage a public uh, cloud deployment, a private cloud deployment, or a hybrid cloud deployment by leveraging VMware as a consistent framework. Because what's underneath that framework, all the hardware, you know, the price performance curve on, you know, PC servers, that's going to continue to evolve. There are always going to be bigger, faster, you know, machines out there. And um, we don't want to um, get caught up in being tied to pieces of hardware. So we've moved it up to the software level, which means this software up here can stay consistent and you can continue to build value on that while you know, the network below you continues to evolve. So a little bit more about Mitel um, in doing and delivering our software. Uh, this, the first bullet is what I was describing to you. It's, it's a single piece of software that we've determined as cloud, you know, cloud ready, which means you can deploy it on your site, on a hardware based platform if you choose, if your network's not ready you know, on a purpose-built box from us, or of course, on top of VMware in your data center. So if you're a customer or you have customers that are making investments in unified communications, they're investing with a company that's gonna allow them to migrate that solution forward. It's not gonna be, you know, sunk cost, you know? So today, maybe they're not ready to be fully virtualized. So they deploy a Mitel solution. Well, six months to a year down the road, they wanna virtualize. Well, they can just move all those users and licenses over into the virtualized deployment um, you know, environment, which is really nice when customers start looking at investment protection and cost of ownership models. Freedom from walled garden architecture is uh, really one of our main tenets, which means 
we're not going to lock our customers in, which means we're not going to say you can only work with these ERP systems, or you can only work with you know, these CRM systems, or you can only use Mitel endpoints on our system. You know, we support industry standard open protocol that says if you have a, you know, a, an industry standard supported device, you can use it with our system. We're under no illusions that people are going to prefer to put Mitel devices on their desk. We hope they do, and we're happy to sell those to them, but more and more people are going to work mobile, so they're going to want to be tied into their mobile device, so we want to make sure we're providing that seamless uh, integration. And also, it's, um, you don't want to, we, we just don't want to get into the business of dictating to customers, you must use this network you know, infrastructure, you must use this type of server platforms. I mean, customers make those choices based on what the best needs for their business are, what their preferences are, what relationships they have, and we're going to um, be agnostic across those, um, across those platforms. Now, providing an in-office experience anywhere is about providing a consistent way to communicate whether you're sitting at your desk using a Mitel IP phone or whether you're talking on your iPhone or your Droid device or even your BlackBerry. Just a quick informal poll. How many BlackBerry users are in the crowd today? Don't be afraid. <laughs> so there's a few, right? I was one for a while. How many Droid users are there? Wow. That's amazing. And then iPhone, whew, sorry, Rim. So um, that, was, uh, that is a classic example of a company that took their eye off the ball, right? I'm not here to bash Rim or BlackBerry by any stretch of the imagination, but what happened to Rim uh, can happen to any technology company that loses sight of what makes them value. It's, it's one thing to, to continue to win business from customers and grow market share. But you're not going to continue that trend unless you understand why you're being successful. REM lost touch with why they were successful. And if you talk to, you know, to BlackBerry, they have an outstanding security platform to deploy their solution on the BlackBerry Enterprise server, mobile voice server. You know, the IT policy management is probably the best out there. But that was their main selling value point. But that's not really what made BlackBerry successful. What made BlackBerry successful was when it first came out, it, it was a status. You know, you had CEOs walking around with a BlackBerry and then another CEO going, hey man, what is that? Oh, that's my email. Oh, that's outstanding. Hey, I need one of these. All of a sudden, you had arrived. If you had a BlackBerry, you're the man or the woman. Well, in 2007, Steve Jobs stood on stage and introduced the iPhone. And it was very fickle. I gotta have that. That's cool. That's the next status symbol. It's a personal choice is what I'm driving at for mobility. Right? So that just, you know, RIM is continuing to lose market share. Now they're trying to stave that off. They do really good business outside of North America, for sure, within the government business, and they're really trying to reinvent themselves. And I wish them luck, because I think if we have three or four good, solid mobile players out there, you know, it's better for all of us. But the key to this is, a lesson that Mitel took from this is, we're not gonna tie ourselves to a piece of hardware that's built on a consumer or a personal choice. We're gonna provide you a set of applications that'll work on an iPhone, a Droid, or a Blackberry. Like, we don't wanna dictate that choice for you. That's what we mean by freedom from a wall garden architecture, or an in-office experience, or both, actually. And then, finally, freedom of commercial offering. That's very simple to say that, listen, uh, if you're, you're partners or your uh, end customers want to make a purchase using uh, capital, you know, capital purchase cycles, that's just fine with us. We're happy to take cash as are our partners. Or we offer, um, you know, a uh, subscription-based service, which is, you know, you're from the cloud, you're subscribing on a user base per month operating expense. All right, so this is just a little bit of grounding or a graphical representation of what I was talking to you about on uh, the virtualization of the framework um, that we see out there. So we've moved from you know, where we used to have servers, you know, and applications. And just a little note on that. It used to be that, um, and we did a couple of case studies on this, where when businesses deployed an application before virtualization on a server, it was basically one server, one application. The cost to do that was about $14,000 by the time you bought the server, installed the hard, our software, and got it powered up and working. After the installation of VMware, you could do the same thing for about $5,000. So that nearly cut that by two thirds. So from a capital expenditure perspective, virtualizing your data center is a huge cost savings, which is well past the tipping point, and most businesses are well onto this. 
Now, as we move, move forward, um, being able to operate within that public and private um, you know, architecture, this is what's really gonna give customers the agility to deploy the way they want and move into next generation technology. So how do we fit into all this? This is a little bit of a summary, and I'm, this might be a little difficult to see for you guys in the back, but if we start at the bottom, this is uh, the myriad of devices I was describing to you. There's, you know, there's a Mitel device out here, there's iPads, there's Droid devices, there's legacy devices out there. You have to be able to integrate to these because customers are, and really always have been, really fiscally responsible, so ripping and replacing their technology where that doesn't make sense is just a non-starter. So you wanna be able to go in and talk to a customer about how can we move you from point A to point B, kind of help them solve the here to there problem. So when you can drop, you know, Mitel's, you know, call control and our, you know, voice over IP and unified communications into their infrastructure and leverage what they have in place, being VMware or network infrastructure, uh, Cisco, HP, Juniper, whatever it is, and then start tackling different parts of their business, like maybe they need to upgrade their contact center. They don't have to do a wholesale swap out. <coughs> or maybe they need to enable some remote teleworkers. You know, in other words, you can pick your spots with your customers and help them expand and cap that investment in legacy technology and start moving you know, to an integrated you know, approach with VMware, just like they did with the rest of their applications, like their CRMs, ERPs, uh, and other applications they have. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Wanna hear more jokes? Just kidding. <laughs> but um, I, just, I would just like to share with you, when, when I speak with uh, business owners, whether they're small business or, or large enterprise customers, you know, this is, a, this is a strategy that really resonates with these folks, you know, and they've, they've gone and they've built these extensive uh, practices and made investments in virtualization. Uh, the last numbers we saw, I think VMware is uh, in 85% of businesses. So eight out of 10 customers you go to talk to, they're going to have VMware. So when you can go in there and talk to those folks about leveraging that investment, leveraging that skill set, you know, asking them, look, you don't have to go and put in a separate infrastructure for your voice and unified communications, that's gonna start to resonate to number one, the CFO, because he's not spending twice as much as he needs to, the CEO, because the CEO is interested in a little bit of a different thing than the IT guys are. He's interested in Competitive advantage, revenue protection, customer retention, customer service. You know, he wants to report back to his board that he's growing the business and he's using technology strategically to help him do that. So you're now fitting into that IT strategy that's supporting that CEO's initiative rather than worried about working on legacy equipment, keeping the lights on 70% of the times. So we can flip that around and start working on the business agility side, you know, helping them drive the business. Right? So the top two bullets are really what VMware brings to businesses. You know, we talked a little bit about the capital cost savings, you know, that uh, the hardware footprint optimization gives you the reduced, um, you know, power requirements and footprints, you know, just you're powering fewer devices. And on the operational side, because you can deploy, you know, applications quicker, you can manage more applications, you know, with fewer admins, you're improving your operational costs. Now, when you combine Mitel's applications with this, there's three additional benefits you get this, kind of the two plus two equals five, you know, with Mitel and VMware. <clears throat> so we're gonna leverage that common applications deployment practice. Deploy, you know, Mitel's applications the same way you do the rest of your business apps. A consistent management strategy. So in other words, um, I'm gonna try not to get too far into the weeds here, but there are things in the virtualization uh, management framework, things like vMotion and high availability that allow you to move you know, live running applications from one host to another, you know, if a host fails, well, our applications work just like that. So you can keep, you know, businesses available. You don't have to worry about their services going out. <clears throat> and then you have one business continuity and disaster recovery plan. You know, you don't want to have two. Anybody who's ever had to work with one business continuity and disaster recovery plan certainly doesn't want to manage and test two, speaking from experience. So we're the only today, we're the only fully supported virtual UC platform, you know, blessed by VMware, tested in their data centers, verified by our customers, and, you know, we're growing quite rapidly with this. Now, this is what it would look like. This is not to scale by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, as we've talked about up to this point, all of our applications are deployed in the data center, and we could have, you know, all sorts of uh, different users out in our community, 
you know, we could have a typical office workstation, which I have a desktop computer, I have a, you know, I have an IP phone sitting there, and we support all the thin client computing like VM View, so they could walk in and log in, it would log them into their desktop, get them access to their applications, as well as logging them right into their MyTel IP phone. So you could operate at a shared services model if you wanted, maybe you've got agents, contact centers coming in and out, you know, you could do that. You could also provide a complete mobile user, a laptop, you know, using a soft phone, you know, connected in this world, or even an ultra mobile uh, user using an iPad and an iPhone or a Droid device to completely get access to your business communication systems. It comes back to being able to provide businesses choice and flexibility to deploy their user communities in the way that make the most sense for them over whatever device or medium they want to communicate over. Ultimately, what that drives for business is it drives costs out of the business. It helps you provide better, you know, superior um, collaboration and also top-notch business continuity because you built a bulletproof data center. So why not leverage that and keep your communications running? Because a lot of times for businesses, if you can't talk to your customers, you're not, you're not generating revenue, right? Now we deliver, you know, all of our applications on a single, uh, what we call a virtual application. So this means things like being able to see uh, presence and availability, who's on the phone, who's on their computer, click to call, instant message, you know, unified messaging where you can get your uh, voicemail streamed to you in one client, you know, the ability to deploy a contact center, that's, uh, you know, where you call in, hello, thank you for calling, next agent will be with you in three years, just please hold. <laughs> just kidding. And it's one place to access all your communication tools, because the last thing you want to do with technology is have it where it's deployed and people have to interact too much with the technology. It becomes a task, not a tool. You know, so you want to provide you know, ease of use and simplicity tied into their business processes. That's where you get a win-win with your customers. And you can only do that when you understand what's important to the individual businesses that you talk to. So um, there's a lot going on on this slide. This is just a quick snapshot of what the client looks like. Sir, in the back row, if I could ask you to just read this right here. Just kidding. This is the client that's on your uh, machine. It gives you a quick view um, of you know, who's, on, who's available, who's on the phone, who's available for video conferencing. You can click to call. You can click to do an ad hoc you know, video conference. How many of us have been you know, in this? You know, you're driving down the road. Your calendar's going off. Beep, beep, time to join the conference call. You're driving with a knee, drinking coffee, trying to dial in. Oh, enter the access code. Crap, signal dropped. You know, when you do this, it just automatically calls the people, sets them up and they're on the phone. They don't have to do anything. Um, just, you know, it's all about safety, really. <laughs> um, and then over on the, uh, the right-hand side of the screen is just, you know, again, reflecting the myriad devices that we can support. You know, it's, it's on an iPad, it's, it's on an Asus tablet, it's on a Droid device, it's on an iPhone. Doesn't matter what it is. Just provide a great way to communicate for your customers. Now this is a, we just released this product. It's, I mean, literally coming out. Um, and this is really exciting for us. This is the next generation way to enable uh, conferencing and uh, collaboration for your customers. We call this the UC360. Um, did you see how it went around in a circle, 360? I'm just kidding. Um, what this does is provides, you know, a way to enable the user at his desktop to get very quick access to conferencing and collaboration technology. And it's got a great user interface on there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like a, a virtual, virtual table sitting on, the, uh, sitting on the display, and it's got representation for users sitting around the table. And when you want to interact with one of those, you just push the individual, and it, you can dial, pulls up a directory, dial their phone number. You want video, push the video button. You want to share some sort of a document, whether you have an iPad or an iPhone, you walk up, scan the QR code, automatically connects that device to whatever you are and you can start sharing your content with whoever is out on the other end. Video conferencing has been trying to break through uh, for a number of years and it's got you know, a little bit, of, uh, little bit of a hole in the market and we think it's gonna grow and it's really around uh, business to business was the limitation. Like uh, you know, I wanted to call a business partner, you know, they got a Polycom, this guy's got a Tanberg or a Life Size and I need a firewall and what's going on. So, what this does is this makes making a video call as simple as making a voice call. And it interoperates with Polycom, Cisco, LifeSize, and others, right? And it provides the high definition video conferencing. And it's really targeted at a couple of spots. Number one, uh, kind of the executive or the manager's office where you can do in-room 
presentations, you know, because it supports standard HDMI, so that monitor can be as small or as big as a football field if you want, because it supports that protocol. But in your office, when you're sitting around your little meeting table, you can push up content, discuss with your team. You know, you can quickly, uh, on, the far, on the far right, you could, you know, bring in uh, far-end participants to be part of that meeting for video, quickly share content just by the push of a button. Um, analysts are really grabbing a hold of this. Our customers have been, we can't build these things quick enough. Um, so I urge you, when you get the opportunity to come around and visit with one of, uh, you know, with TSA, um, we can get in and, uh, and have you take a look at this because we think it's really going to change the way people communicate. And um, lastly here, I want to talk about, we started about social media integration. I'll give you a quick example today about improving customer satisfaction and retention leveraging social media integration. So if you think about things in a, in a quadrant, structured, unstructured, solicited, unsolicited, think about feedback for just a second. So if you're putting out a structured form of communication expecting feedback, you're soliciting input and you're gonna get structured feedback. That's okay. The worst place you wanna be is when there's feedback going on about your business that falls into the unsolicited, unstructured uh, com, you know, column. That means that people are talking about you on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and you don't know about it. Revenue might be going this way. You're measuring a bunch of metrics that seem to make sense to you. Well, everything should be going in the right direction. But out here, your customers aren't happy. So if you have triggers out there to pick up certain keywords and certain things that are going on in the social sphere, you can take that interaction, pull that into your contact center and route it to an expert. If it's a problem, they can reach out and find out what's going on. Right? And that's the negative side of it. What about the positive side? You know, Stephanie and I were talking about the new uh, high-definition TV she just bought for her husband. Wow, this is great, Steve. It's the best thing I ever saw in my life. What if Best Buy could pick that up and then send Stephanie a $50 Starbucks card or something for doing business with you? That would create a loyal customer. I'd be thrilled. But just start to think about how social media is going to change the way we communicate and interact with our customers. This is just a quick view of what's happening in the market. So we started tracking back in, uh, I think, 2008, when we released our first virtual application. The top line represents our, uh, our community of folks that are buying virtualized applications and distributing these. That's going in the right direction. The folks out of the market that have shied away from virtual, virtualized <coughs> data centers and applications are heading in the wrong direction. So it provided us a couple of indications. Number one, it's what the market wants to see. So it's the right thing out there today. So in summary, you know, Mitel is a world-leading world provider of IP communications, and we'd be happy to work with you guys or any of your partners out there to help you, um, you know, purchase a Mitel system. I have purchase orders uh, right here, actually. <laughs> Just teasing. Not really. And we're partnered with the world leader in virtualization. These are the two biggest trends in IT right now. By the way, IT has a lot of money. Over the next three years, four years, sorry, $3.6 trillion are going to be spent in IT. That's a lot. So in summary, Mitel provides you a single cloud-ready stream of software you know, that can be deployed on your private data center in the cloud or any combination thereof in a hybrid technology. We are you know, partnered with and continue to lead the virtualized unified communications uh, march into the market. We're going to free you from a wall garden architecture, which allows you to choose the best applications for your business and run your business the way you want to run it, give you that experience a consistent experience, whether it's on your mobile device, whether it's on an IP phone, in the office or not. And then lastly, we have the world's most feature-rich unified communications offering in the market, um, which means you've got a lot to choose from. That doesn't mean you're going to need to deploy all 600 and some odd you know, capabilities that we have, but there's going to be a subset of that that are going to be really important to you, and uh, we'd love to sit down with you and try to figure that out. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for your time, and I'll be here for a little bit longer if anybody has any questions. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. How has your channel partner relationships changed over the last couple of years? Drastically. Just teasing. Um, we have probably one of the most um, dynamic channels in this market. And they're a loyal channel. Um, we've maintained probably uh, about what I would call 450 of them in the US have been with us for quite a while. And they've evolved the right way 
over time. They've made the right business investments, they've made the training investments, and they've worked with us to strategize where they need to be, which means we sat down with them before this stuff starts hitting the market, and they understand that I need to hire new skill sets, I need to provide different training. So they had, they've had to evolve. And what you saw on that bifurcation of those two lines were, it was a subsection of some of our channel partners that you know, stayed, you know, maybe they were just you know, gonna sell off the business, they were you know, running things in another direction, but they weren't on board with networking, virtualization, and they started to get hurt in the market. Now some of them got acquired by bigger partners and they went, but overall, our, our partner community has continued to evolve with Mitel and we continue to look for uh, other partners that you know, are uh, successful in this space and want to uh, partner with Mitel to drive more UCC sales. Any other questions? Come on, I'm full of useless information. <laughs> Thank you.